our, our CAP system, um, the Carlin uh, Combustion Air uh, Proving System. And um, the combustion air proving system essentially um, is directing air um, to the burner, uh, outside air. And it's got a uh, device on there that will allow us to uh, interlock with the burner and lock out the burner um, in case of no combustion air. So when we talk about combustion air, the average person um, is probably making certain assumptions about where this combustion air is coming from. Um, oftentimes, we're just relying on, on infiltration, um, air uh, coming through uh, whatever leaks there might be um, in the construction of uh, the house. Uh, th that seemed to have been fine for, for many years ago. Uh, but, but today, uh, your houses are built a little bit tighter. Um, that's not always going to be um, an effective way to introduce combustion air. Um, most of the time, uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on uh, throughout the house. Uh, we've got exhaust. Uh, we've got uh, air possibly coming in from uh, different openings, permanent openings uh, throughout the house, uh, infiltrating in and out of the uh, living space. Uh, sometimes the house is uh, sealed tight under new construction, uh, and we're recirculating um, much of the air uh, in the house uh, and introducing very little air from the outside. Uh, certainly not enough uh, to support combustion. And sometimes uh, it works. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it's, it's not a problem. Um, but when it's not a problem, uh, you know, that's when you have to be concerned because it can and it most likely will become a problem. Uh, not being certain of where your combustion air is, is being introduced in the house uh, certainly is not code. Um, code requires that you understand um, and you introduce uh, proper combustion air into, into the home for the appliance. And most of that is defined under NFPA uh, 31. And they basically are looking at two standards here, unconfined space, and confined space. So uh, by definition, um, an unconfined space uh, is somewhere that you have at least 7,000 cubic feet of space for every 140,000 uh, BTUs, every gallon of oil. Um, if you cannot meet that definition, then you have what is determined to be a confined space. And when you have a confined space, where is the air coming from? Uh, is it inside the building? Girl, are, you uh, are you gonna take Good all girl. air from outside or will it be a combination uh, of ventilation air from inside the building and combustion air uh, from outdoors? So um, in order to um, meet these specifications or understand the regulations, um, you know, first it requires a bit of explaining a confined space um, is listed as a space whose volume is less than 50 square feet per 1,000 uh, BTUs. So that would mean in an 80,000 BTU appliance, you need 4,000 square feet. That's a room 22 by 22. 120,000, you go to 27 by 27. That's 6,000 square feet. When was the last time you saw an open basement, 27 by 27, um, that had no storage, had no partitions, um, had nothing but free open space um, in the basement. So because of these requirements, um, we're looking at different options. Uh, those current options, um, direct, uh, direct air to the outside. Well, um, how often is a boiler room on an outside wall with a window uh, or an opening to the outside? That's not always uh, possible. Ducted, you can always run a duct uh, from an internal boiler room uh, to the outside, but the ducting is uh, bulky because it's got to be proper size and it's expensive. We have mechanical ventilation. Um, 
you can supply air through some type of a fan and bring in outside air into the space where the boiler is, whether that be a boiler room or an open basement. Uh, but you're going to bring in hot, humid air uh, in the summer months and cold air uh, during the uh, winter. And cold air, we know that um, most homeowners, uh, if they're ventilating through an open window, um, they will close the window in, in the winter. If there's a louver, uh, somebody's gonna cover that louver uh, and, and put something on there that doesn't allow the cold air to infiltrate, especially after they experience their first freeze up on that very, very cold night when they turn the heat down and that cold air is coming into the boiler room and freezing that, that water pipe that runs right across uh, that ventilation uh, opening. A fan will consume electricity. It's expensive to install. It's expensive to run because it operates uh, all the time when the burner is running. Um, current options don't allow um, for interacting uh, directly with the burner uh, and shutting the burner down um, with the control on the burner. You have to go through some auxiliary switch uh, on the device, will, which will then cause some sort of a lockout. Um, and the technician also is now looking for a lockout condition that may or may not be obvious. Um, the CAP system uh, was something we looked at for a long time, uh, something that we felt was needed uh, in the industry. And um, our design was that uh, an air intake with built-in uh, air proving uh, solves the combustion air problem by using outside air. And it addresses the blockage uh, concerns uh, with the integral uh, shutoff. It's designed for the Carlin EZ series uh, oil burners uh, from 0.5 to two gallons an hour. And it's designed to work uh, with a burner equipped with a 70200 Pro X uh, primary control. Uh, it's retrofitted to an existing Carlin burner cover, or it can be purchased as a add-on uh, with a cover and kit um, complete. So let's just take a quick look at combustion air openings. Um, so unless you've got 7,000 cubic feet of open space that you know um, is not gonna get filled with furniture, it's not gonna have boxes when your uh, daughter moves uh, away to college or when your daughter returns from college, uh, when your in-laws decide to move in with you and they're gonna store their furniture and their boxes in your basement. Uh, if you can guarantee 7,000 cubic feet per gallon uh, an hour, um, then you meet the definition for unconfined space. Um, if that's not the case, uh, then you have to provide 28 square inches of net free area for every gallon per hour. And this can change if the air is not vented directly to the outside from the area where the boiler or appliance is located. In this chart, um, we look at the different requirements uh, based on whether the air is being ducted into the boiler room directly from the outside, whether it is ducted from a transitional room somewhere uh, in between the boiler room and the outside, and then there can be ducting uh, from a ventilated attic uh, or crawl space. So the first example here shows you that you need one inch square for every 4,000 uh, BTUs that you're firing. You need two openings to the outside. Uh, you need one 12 inches from the ceiling, another one 12 inches from the floor. Here's some examples of ducting uh, not directly to the outside. In the case of a ventilated attic where you have a vertical duct or an opening into a ventilated crawl space uh, down below, 
that requirement remains at 4,000 um, BTUs per square inch. However, in a horizontal duct, uh, where you're transferring from the appliance room through a space to the outside, your requirements change and they double in, re in capacity where you now need 2,000 BTUs, uh, you need one inch square for every 2,000 BTUs. So that's gonna provide for a rather large duct. You have a combination uh, of multiple units. Um, then you have to account for the total load inside that appliance uh, room. So whatever your total load is, uh, you multiply by the type of ducting that you're running and that will determine your uh, square area and don't forget, you're looking at net square area when you finalize uh, your calculations. Here's a setup for air transition from one space into another. So you're not ducting here, but you're using openings, one directly to the outside and then a transition opening from your appliance room uh, into the space where the air is being introduced. Uh, again, these requirements are in an FPA 31, and you've got to follow uh, these requirements to understand where your combustion air uh, is coming from. Many of us who've been in the industry uh, over um, you know, a period of time, uh, often we'll go into a boiler room. I know for me, it's habit uh, as I go into the equipment room, boiler room, uh, furnace room, where is the ventilation? Where's the uh, combustion air coming from? Um, very important um, when you have a poorly constructed uh, furnace installation where there may be leaks in the return ducting and you're actually drawing air from inside uh, the space. Uh, you're going to run out of air very, very quickly uh, if you're not introducing air uh, from the outside. This brings up the conversation of negative pressure. So when your house has a potential for negative pressure and you're not introducing any air from the outside, that combustion process is going to be affected. Uh, you're going to be pulling the air out of the house and you're gonna have no room uh, or no air left uh, for combustion. Negative pressure uh, today is so much more important. Um, people put in exhaust fans uh, in every space that they can. Um, you know, three bathrooms in the house, three exhaust fans, the potential for each fan running simultaneous um, is always there. Um, what about that, you know, $40,000, $50,000 kitchen with that exhaust duct? Um, that commercial ducting that they put in that commercial exhaust fan will suck a baby through if you're not holding on tight. Uh, that's putting a lot of air um, through the house. Um, you're going to have the potential. Um, for negative pressure. Uh, at least when you're ducting to the outside, uh, you stand a chance uh, of introducing uh, air directly to the burner uh, and less of an effect um, from the negative pressure. Hey, um, everyone, feel free to um, unmute yourself and, and ask a question at any time. Um, Chris, are they able to unmute? Yeah, that's Chris Murray. He's, he's here with me. Can, can you guys see Chris Murray? Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's helped me out uh, for today. So optional direct air intake. Um, when you're using a manufacturer's termination piece um, and you're direct venting um, to the outside, you're introducing uh, air directly to the burner. Um, this is one alternative, uh, sometimes expensive, uh, sometimes uh, it, it's even um, obtrusive. Um, it doesn't look nice on the outside. Um, not always uh, a first choice uh, when people have uh, other alternatives. 
So an option uh, would be to have a burner cover uh, and back plate and um, pipe that in, uh, use that snorkel device there to uh, pipe in to the outside and run uh, a separate uh, pipe, um, either galvanized or PVC, that allows you to introduce air uh, directly to the burner. These, these type of devices have existed now for quite some time um, and, and they work well. However, um, as they exist now, they don't meet the current code where you have to be able to interlock the burner in case there's an obstruction um, on the outside air. So what we've done is we've taken our existing cover uh, and design, uh, modified it, uh, improved it, and now we have uh, what we call our CAP system, combustion air proving system. So the combustion air proving system um, is able to bring in outside air uh, directly uh, with the built-in uh, air proving uh, switch. So what we've done is solved a few problems. Um, we're able to use outside air so there's less concern for what's happening inside the house. Uh, we're able to solve blockage concerns where if there is a blockage, whether it's permanent or temporary, and temporary sometimes can mean a sudden burst uh, of, of wind, uh, high wind condition um, coming across the air intake will cause or can cause a negative pressure on that air intake. And that can show up as a temporary blockage. Um, we've addressed that temporary concern um, with some programming, some clever programming in the uh, Pro X 70200 uh, control. Um, by making this UL approved, um, we waited for NFPA uh, to read and review the spec uh, to look at our design and rewrite uh, their spec so that we could get NFPA uh, approval. And typically NFPA and UL approval means building code uh, compliance. Uh, we haven't run across a single situation yet um, where this has not been approved uh, by a building uh, inspector. So what we've done is um, pipe the air directly to the burner. Uh, no need to bring in uncomfortable air uh, from the outside. And we've addressed those temporary concerns uh, of, of high wind. The CAP system again is designed for the Carlin uh, Easy Series uh, oil burners. Um, equipped with a 70200 primary control and firing from 0.5 to 2 gallons per hour. This is a residential device uh, designed for residential applications. If the burner already has a Carlin cover on it, uh, then there is a kit to upgrade that to a CAP system. And if the burner was not already equipped with the cover, then there is a complete kit that introduces the cover and the um, intake piece together with the um, switch uh, necessary to make it work. It can be mounted vertical or horizontal. Uh, there's actually three positions, three knockouts on the back cover plate that can be used. So it's pretty versatile um, to accommodate most installations. Uh, it's UL approved. Um, with a schedule 40 or 83 inch PVC pipe, and now also four inch uh, galvanized uh, metal pipe. The galvanized pipe uh, was recently introduced uh, to simplify uh, how the uh, installation can be done out in the field. It does require an extra step because you have to seal all your joints, you have to tape or use mastic uh, on your joints where you're joining uh, the pipes and on the seams of the uh, pipe itself. Uh, so it's, it's, it's gotta be sealed tight in order for the uh, system to be approved. Um, 
However, uh, the PVC pipe made it easy. If you glue your joints, uh, there is a plastic adapter piece uh, that ties it in with the intake uh, onto the uh, burner cover, and that seals it uh, for a nice uh, tight seal. Uh, installation instructions will tell you that uh, the maximum length of run, uh, including all your 90 degree elbows, 45 degree bends, uh, your maximum linear length is 80 feet. Uh, there is instructions uh, on actually uh, locating the inlet piece away from snow grade. Uh, this is this is something that not is not obvious to everyone, um, and it's something that's important um, because if that intake does become blocked, uh, you will have a, a lockout, um, and it's against code. So uh, maintaining that 12 inches above uh, you know anticipated snow level uh, is important and 12 inches from any other opening. So we don't introduce air being exhausted from any opening um, in the house. Here's a uh, typical installation. Um, this is what uh, it, it might look like. Uh, they're using uh, the inlet tapping on the top right hand corner. There's another one on the left uh, side. Uh, top and the left side um, sideways, so it's horizontal as opposed to uh, vertical. The cap system has a built-in damper. The damper can be closed for test purposes, uh, so you would temporarily interrupt airflow, and the air switch down below would detect a loss in flow, and that would open the contacts on the primary control, the Carlin uh, Pro X primary control, and trigger an event into the primary control. Now that event is going to be handled in uh, several different ways. I'm going to cover that um, shortly, uh, but the test feature is there uh, in case you need to test during an inspection in case you're doing your annual maintenance or just a simple tune-up or service call, um, you want to be able to test the functionality uh, and, and make sure that the system is working properly. That uh, connector piece is a soft rubber connector that transitions uh, from four inch to three inch. Uh, it provides a, a, a tight seal so that we can maintain the seal from the intake piece directly to the outside termination uh, piece. The outside termination piece comes in the kit. Uh, it consists of a, uh, a 90 degree elbow, um, a screen, uh, a critter screen, if, if you will, I believe it's quarter inch mesh, um, and it connects to the uh, PVC pipe uh, going back to the burner. The wiring on the system is simple. Um, the Pro X70200 control was upgraded in September of 2018. Uh, the new programming uh, allowed uh, the features I'm about to describe uh, to be built into the uh, Pro X control to be able to manage uh, the different scenarios that we encountered while testing. Uh, and we know will exist um, in the field. But it's a simple two wire connection, um, BV, BV contacts, um, should be able to see those right there. Um, you simply connect uh, two low voltage wires right to those contacts and um, program the control and you're up and running. Again, we're looking at those uh, BV contacts right there. Um, and all this wiring is done internally inside the cover, the burner cover. So there's no external wires to run. Uh, there's no line voltage connection uh, to this switch. Um, 
you almost can't make a mistake unless you're trying. So in the setup for the control, uh, what we're asking you to do is go into the setup menu and change the vent input. Um, default setting on that vent input in a um, uh, call-in uh, Pro X70200 control uh, is none. So when it leaves the factory, it is not programmed to accept either an intake or exhaust block vent. Um, but you simply change it to uh, an intake uh, on the block vent and the program will then allow you to connect uh, to the CAP system. So some of the uh, clever uh, programming checks that we built into the control to prevent nuisance lockouts. A, a temporary uh, gust of wind uh, that would potentially create a, um, a block vent indication because your pressure could go negative uh, on the air intake. If that were to exist, uh, then we have some built-in delays uh, that will test for that. And if the blockage goes away after the test, then we would resume normal operation. So if they're in pre-purge, the um, block vent terminals were to open, um, we would extend uh, pre-purge for 10 seconds. And after each extension, we're testing to see if the terminals have closed, meaning that the block vent uh, event is gone. Uh, we will try that up to three times. If after the third attempt, uh, the condition still exists, then a lockout will occur, a shutdown, um, and the message on the primary control will be block vent. It will tell you that the cause of the lockout was due to a block vent event. Um, during your run cycle, um, we treat that a little bit different. If the intake, uh, if there's an indication that the intake is blocked during the run cycle, then we will allow the burner to run for 20 seconds, hoping that it's only temporary. And if it goes away within those 20 seconds, uh, there won't be any response uh, from the control. But if after 20 seconds, uh, the condition still exists, then the burner will shut down and recycle. This recycle can occur up to three times. If on the third recycle, we still detect a block vent, then the burner will go into lockout. And once again, the fault message you will receive is block vent. Burners are allowed to recycle up to three times. Um, and the lockout will only occur um, after that third recycle. The test damper will give you the same functionality. So all these conditions can be duplicated by simply closing that test damper that comes built into the uh, intake on the cap system. One of the very important um, chapters or paragraphs in that IO manual with the cap system is that we instruct all technicians uh, to adjust the burner uh, based on this chart. When you bring in an outside air, um, if you adjust the burner during the summer on a 65 degree day, when the temperature outside drops below 20, 20 degrees, even colder, uh, the more uh, dense air uh, will bring in or introduce more oxygen. And that will make the burner run leader, leaner and possibly cause uh, some rough starts and maybe even a lockout. So this chart is provided 
uh, for the technician to make his adjustment based on the outside temperature on the day that the system is installed. So if the temperature is somewhere between five degrees and 30 degrees, uh, we're looking for a CO2 of between 11 to 11 and a half uh, percent. Uh, this is to uh, account for the uh, leaner operation in cold temperatures. And the assumption is, or it's knowledge that when the temperature rises, um, there will be less oxygen, so your CO2 uh, will rise. I don't know if you can see this um, full slide. You can see this whole slide? Yeah. Um, so this is basically a, uh, a system sizing um, chart. Um, we decided to provide it in three different, or make it available in three different uh, sizes based on firing rate. So based on your anticipated firing rate, if you're gonna order a cap system, uh, you're gonna order off the part numbers that you see on this chart. Uh, there is some overlap, of course. Um, if you're looking to possibly stock uh, a cap system or you don't know where you will install it, uh, we have a complete kit uh, that will offer all three sizes. The difference, though, is that um, the low rate, um, medium rate, and high rate uh, basically do not have a cover. It's expected that you already have a covered burner. You're gonna get uh, the cover seal kits. Uh, you'll get your uh, pressure switch, um, your adapters, your termination piece, uh, everything necessary for you to complete that burner cover and turn it into a cap system. If you order the complete kit, that is gonna come with a cover and with a back plate, uh, plus all three switches um, based on um, you know, the firing rates of 0.5 uh, to two gallons an hour. Uh, and, and keep in mind that if you're using a cap system, you have to use a Carlin 70200 primary control uh, made after September of 2018. And it is UL approved, only UL approved on a Carlin uh, burner, a Carlin Easy burner for now. Um, any questions uh, on any of that? Nobody? No questions? You guys still awake out there? Jason, you got nothing to say? Is there a message? Are they allowed to unmute? I'm good. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Jason. I can hear you, Jason. Unfortunately. <laughs> Chris, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> you did a great job, buddy. You killed it, brother. I like that. Yeah, we, we have a different setup here. I can't hear anything on um, my station. Um, I'm listening to Chris's laptop, um, and the volume is kept low, so we don't get any echo. Um, you did a great job. All right. Well, I mean, that's you know, that's that's our cap system. Um, you know, there's no questions. I appreciate everybody's time. Um, you know, there's still time for uh, a nice meal and um, even a few cocktails, uh, if you will. If I must. What do you say? Force my hand. <laughs> if you must. I, I, I know that it would take a lot to persuade you uh, to do that, um, Scott, but yeah, you should. All right, since you said so, teacher, I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> you instructed him. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Angel, what was the length, the, the max length you can run that pipe? 80 feet, 80, 80. linear feet, including your um, elbows and um, any fittings. Okay. In, Angel, that chart you showed for setting up uh, with cold air temperatures, 
Is that the same chart they use for gas or is it a little different? On the I heard CO2. a question about the cold air temperature. Yeah, on the CO2 values. Well, Jason, I'm going to say no, it's not the same chart you use for gas. Uh, I know for a fact that this one was developed specifically for the CAP system. Oh, okay. So I don't know um, that it applies um, to everything out there. Um, Looks like a great reference. Just from our testing, uh, this is a chart that um, our lab developed for, for the CAP system. Matter of fact, quick story behind this. They rented a refrigerated trailer to be able to bring in cold air in the middle of July and August. Uh, <laughs> the guys were wearing, uh, initially they put the boilers in the trailer, uh, but I think that, that idea went um, by the wayside pretty quick. Uh, eventually they just put the uh, air intake into the trailer and, and they were ducting it to uh, the lab to bring in cold air. Uh, so th this chart. This is a great chart. Did, huh? This is yeah, a great so I guess chart. we bought a refrigerated trailer um, and it's probably somewhere here on the property because they cut holes in it. Um, but the, the answer I think is no, this is uh, right now, I, I think this is unique uh, to, to the cap system. Well, you should use this in all your training documents because they need this, especially in Alaska in those cold climates when they set up the burners. It's very helpful even with the gas burners. That's what I'm saying. That's a nice chart and that's something they under, need to understand between July and December. Big difference. It's a nice chart. Compliment from you, Jason. I, I like that. Thank you. All right. If there's no further questions, um, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I appreciate um, your time being here with us. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Great buddy. job, Angel. Thanks. Okay. Everybody have a good day.